Galway County Council is one of the lead partners on the Shared Island Project overall, so it's appropriate that we have a speaker from Galway County Council to bring us close to the conclusion. This is uh, Tina Ryan, who is the Climate Change Coordinator at Galway County Council, and Tina's going to tell us a little bit about the local authority plans for, for the food and agri sector. Okay. Sorry, and lest I forget it, just a reminder again about your little postcards and the questions that uh, we were asking there, the baskets at the front, your understanding of sustainability and three examples that you can think of. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, you'll be glad to know I'm the last speaker and uh, you'll, be, you'll be getting home soon, but I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I did. I found it really interesting. There were some brilliant speakers here today. And one of the people I have to thank for that is Bree here, who was involved in organising it and found these amazing speakers. So thank you very much, Bree. <laughs> and I suppose um, as a background, um, when Bree and I started talking about this um, and how climate and food and agriculture link up, there is so many links. Um, and there's a lot of areas within uh, climate where we maybe can't have a direct effect. But food is something that we do three times a day. It's something we spend quite a bit of our money on. And it's an area where we can make a very considerable difference. And the ESRI have done studies with people now to see what they think, what changes they can make. And actually food is one of the areas they don't really understand that much about. They understand that their transport has a big effect, they understand that their energy has a big effect, but food can also be a big part of that. And we can see from the farmers that, and the farm community that were here for today, from Dinny and Brendan and Eva, that the type of food that you buy and the decisions that you make with your consumer power are really, really important. That it's not necessarily a type of food, but it's the type, the way that food was produced. And sometimes it can be hard to understand how that food is produced and maybe um, there's some work we can do on that so that consumers can make a more informed choice and understand where their food is coming from. So just as a little bit of background, um, I know you'll all be aware of, um, unfortunately it's very easy to find pictures each time I go, there's new issues that have happened around the world as a result of climate change. No one, um, incident or climate event can be directly linked to climate change but there is an increase in the frequency um, and the i suppose the ferocity of some of these events as a result of climate change these are some of the issues around the world earlier on this year you have the wildfires in canada these were floods in italy early on in the year and you're talking about very significant amounts of money and um, there's seven billion worth of damage done in italy there um, and then, of course, you have parts of the world <coughs> where, with climate change, you would have very serious effects on the food that they can produce. And one of the things we don't think about so much is, if there's areas of the world where you can't produce food, then those people, they need to move to areas where you can produce food. And that's one of the things that we'll need to think about going forward. <coughs> the decisions that we make now will mean either this can get much worse, or we can reduce it and we can prevent some of these potential effects. So we did a study recently um, earlier on this year and this is specifically to Galway and the effects of climate change and this is kind of what's predicted based on our current levels of emissions and what we're planning to do. So we will see an increase in river flooding and coastal flooding, coastal erosion and one of the areas that's important there particularly for the farming community would be for drought as well that that could impact on the way people farm. So we need to think about that, we need to understand the changes that are coming and adapt to that. Um, and we also need to try and mitigate and reduce our emissions. So these are the emissions um, across Europe. And I know that some people would say that um, across the world people need to take action, and they do. But within Ireland, we're the third higher, highest emitters in the EU. So we do have quite a way to come. And some of it will be relatively easy, and it is happening. Like our um, electricity supply is moving, and it's, by 2030 we aim to have 80% renewable energy. Um, and that will come from our wind resource. And that's one of the things that can show the kind of benefits from climate action, in that we'll be, instead of the billions that we're um, sending to other countries for oil and gas, 
we'll now be keeping that money in Ireland and we'll be producing our energy ourselves. So um, we have very strong targets in Ireland for reducing our emissions. But at the moment, we expect by 2030 to get to about a 29% reduction based on our current actions that we have planned. So we do need to make some additional changes. But I do like to highlight, and I suppose this is something we said, we had um, a youth climate assembly in this very room a couple of months ago, and we had students from all over the county, and they wanted us to take significant action in this area. And they're really interested in working in the green sphere and the sustainability sphere. That's what they want to do. And we were highlighting some of the areas that the benefits of it and the areas where um, there will be work. And that's a whole around renewable generation and all the, the things we're talking about today in the food and agricultural area and in relation to recycling. So, and there's also an awful lot of funding available, um, both as Lisa spoke about, both at a local level and at an EU level. And that's one of the things we want to do in Galway County Council is to work with um, other stakeholders to bring a lot of that funding to Ireland and to the county. So at the moment we're producing a climate action plan and regardless of which county you're in, in the south in Ireland, they're doing this at the moment, so they're frantically working to produce this plan. We'll be hopefully um, releasing our draft plan in, in November, and we really welcome your input to it. So um, we have a remit in the local authority. We work in a lot of different areas. We have um, the local enterprise office, we have planning permission, uh, the planning office, we have the environment section. So there's some things where we can do a lot. We have a full accountability for the fleet and public lighting and, and heating and electricity for our own buildings. There's areas where we can influence change. And then there's areas like in the food and agricultural sector where we can, we can support change, we can build stakeholder groups. And we'll also be working in the kind of education sphere. So that would be around working with all the different sectors in the county to raise an awareness of what it means to be sustainable. And this, and in the food and agriculture sector, this would be to support local food producers, to support um, food companies that are innovating in this area. So some of the actions that we've talked about putting into our plan um, that are in the draft plan at the moment is working with communities around active travel, working with the BIA Innovator Centre here, that's something we want to do, supporting the rollout of EV infrastructure, looking at policy changes, um, and I know someone was speaking about um, the planning um, and some of the issues around that, so that's where we can feed in some changes to make sure that people are supported to make the changes that they need to do. And as well, um, and to support farmers in making changes, and in the area of knowledge transfer, that's something that we'd be working on. And for the businesses that are here, there can be a lot of challenges about moving to net zero. And there can be costs involved with that. So some of the things we can do as a local authority is to bring together users so that um, they it can make things cheaper. So we can bring businesses together and link them up with the SEAI. One of the things we're looking at, um, we've set up a, an energy agency in the um, in Connemara and the islands where we're supporting that. And that will bring groups of businesses and communities together so that you have more people when you're looking to get a company in to do um, maybe retrofits on buildings or installing solar, which makes it cheaper for everyone. We also are going to be opening up a community climate action fund shortly. So we have 70, 750,000 to support uh, local community projects. Um, <coughs> And that would be opening hopefully in November. We're just waiting for confirmation from the department. And so that would be our funding stream, but they're actually, I don't expect you to be able to read this, but it's just to show all the different funding streams that are out there. So we'll be working to link people to those funding streams. We've set up a new climate unit in Galway County Council, and Denise was here earlier, but she had to leave. She's our community climate action officer there on the left. She'll be managing that community climate action fund. So for the people here from Galway, we would just ask you to actively participate in Climate Action Galway, 
come to us um, if you want to be members of stakeholder groups, if there's anything we can do to support you, if there's any actions you'd like to see in the plan. And that would be the same for anyone from other um, counties. I'm sure they would like your input as well. Um, these, these climate units are newly set up in each local authority. It wasn't something that was there before. Um, so hopefully it would be a, a good assistance. So um, that's our email address there if you want to get in contact. So um, the last thing to say is to thank everyone for coming today as well. We really appreciate it. And thank you, Tina, as well. It was really well, well done. Thank you. Thank you.